You're listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Learn more at wearelibertarians.com. Podcast. This is uh, an evergreen episode of East Central Indiana's favorite podcast. I'm Jeremiah Morrill. Today I'm joined by our two f- most loyal co-hosts. I don't know that they were our favorite co-hosts, but our most loyal co-hosts. Uh, on my right is uh, in his Bell's Two-Hearted hat with three ha- three just bells. bells. Just Bell's his, his Bell's three his three Bell's hat. Uh, Chase Payton. Yep. Hey, buddy. On the left we have. Uh, the badass himself, Cade Coger. What's up, man? <laughs> How you guys doing? Doing all right. What are we doing today, Dakota? Today's episode features just the four of us, and there's no producer Chris today. Uh, he's he's off. He's, he's on, on a assignment. hiatus. Slacking. Yeah. We're, we're going to figure out what he's been up to later, maybe. Uh, we are going to be talking about what brought us into the world of podcasting, how we uh, each got our start, where we first found an interest with this. And I feel like... A couple of people in this room might just be that Jeremiah forced them into it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but even so, there's going to be so they, they've they've got influences and things that make them do this, and they've they've That's improved right. on the craft. So I want to hear their stories. You may you may listen to a podcast about the host's favorite podcasts. We're going to find out at the end. First off, Dakota, how's the new baby? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going well. Is it crying a lot? This- <laughs> This show is about our lives in rural Indiana. We're here to push your boundaries and make you think as individuals. Sometimes we'll provoke you. Other times we'll make you laugh. But hopefully you'll always learn something new. Like, oh, my God, Dakota, I didn't know they came out that slimy. Those pictures were, oh, my God. The You mean the what happened on the live stream? Yeah. Yeah. The, the pictures. It was like it was like a lunar video. Um, man, uh, the Patreon people really got a, uh, really got a treat. Hey, Dakota. Uh, uh, Audrey is so good to us. I heard boys, when you're changing their diaper, they, you have to do it fast because they pay, pee on you a lot. Did have you, you been hit yet? I, I think it just depends on, you know, when you're changing their diaper. It's not like boy, little boys are just constantly peeing. I just, don't know. I hear that <laughs> cold air, air hits them and they just, just don't stand there with your mouth Did open. your dad say that you pissed on them a lot? Yeah, I, I piss on everybody, but especially my dad. What about you, Kate? Have you ever been hit? It's like, it's it's the same. It's like, don't work cattle with your mouth open because they like to kick and sling shit everywhere. It's the same rules for kids. Mm. You don't want to run your mouth too much. When don't change don't stand the there. Yeah, you, they'll pee all over you. All right. Maybe wear a rain jacket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of the Patreon folks and what they uh, are getting... Uh, <laughs> We uh, pump out all kinds of bonus content for the Patreon people. Uh, whenever we do regular episodes, we give them a bonus episode every week. Uh, that's a 20, 15 minute, 20 minute episode with the guests, maybe just the hosts, um, every week of who is ever is on the show that week. Um, we also give you access to show notes before the, the shows on Thursdays. Uh, we also give you different perks for different um, tiers that you sign up. Maybe that's a signed postcard from the host. Maybe that is a sticker in the mail. Or maybe if you are $50 or more a month, then we will give you a shout out at the front of every episode. And those folks are Craig DaCosta, Jonathan Phillips, Christy Avery, and of course, the always powerful Chris Lamb. And now let's say if you're if you're going back to high school, we recommend Chris Lamb. If True. you're going to park in Fort Wayne, we recommend Christy Avery. Mm-hmm. If you're going to go get a drunk driving offense in Hawaii, we want you to go see Craig DaCosta. Correct. <laughs> and if you're going to buy a, a brand new GMC or brand new Buick, go see John at uh, Andy Moore. That's right. Fishers, or he'll hook up on the U side as well. I have a question. Can you get a DUI while driving one of those like scooters you rent? Have, yeah. I'm going to say yes. I'm pretty sure you we, we will uh, <laughs> just to be safe. As, as you know, I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like 90% of the people who ride on those are drunk. As you know, our official uh, attorney in county is uh, Sean Rao, Gallion and Rao. So uh, I would I would defer to his uh, his advice on that. I'll probably hit you up one day. We went Sean. to Disney on Ice a month ago and we 
we there was a guy in the parking lot that had a bicycle with like a carriage on it, and he we were late, so I paid the dude twenty bucks to take us to Banker's Life, and we almost got hit by like four scooters on the way. <laughs> it was wild. Back in uh, back in December, um, Sarah and I went to Denver, and she was she uses the scooter. She uses the Bird and the Lime scooters in Indianapolis from time mm-hmm. to time. I have no scooter experience. And it was getting to be dusk and she was trying to talk me into taking one of the scooters. <laughs> and I was like, I, you're supposed to ride them in traffic. If you get one of the scooters, you're supposed, you're not supposed to use them on the sidewalk. Even though people want to use them on the sidewalk, you have to go on the road. And I'm like, I'm not going on a scooter in the dark mm-hmm. with bags. And I have to sit there and get an app and download it and get started and learn <laughs> what I'm doing. And I don't know how to ride the scooter. I don't have to drive the scooter. I, I was, uh, I was too afraid. Fear overtook me, Dakota. I was, I wasn't doing it. Have you, have you done any of the downtown scooters? No, I have no desire to. It seems silly. I've never done the downtown scooters. I just remember wiping out on the the motorized scooters as a kid. So it's yeah. probably not best for me. Yeah, probably I mean, I broke, not. Chase. I broke my arm uh, on roller skates back in the day, before before roller blades were invented. I they used to roller skate, <laughs> and uh, I fractured my arm roller skating down at uh, Frederick's uh, Skating in uh, Messina, New York. I never yeah. mastered the the roller blading. I just always went skating. Yeah, I was a loser. Like everyone would pass me. Could you skate me. backwards? Yeah, like, with could, four wheels. Yeah, but I couldn't do it with the blades. The blades. So the blades were supposed to be easier. Hmm. Not for you. Not for me. Do you ever snow tube, snowboard, snow ski? Any of that? Yeah, I'll tube. I've never went snowboarding or skiing though. So I've I've tried all three. Tubing, obviously, anybody can tube, but snow skiing and snowboarding, I always was better with with two skis than one snowboard. That was impossible. I'm not real good if the ground's moving underneath me and I'm not strapped into a seat with pedals and a steering <laughs> wheel. I'm real good in a go kart or you know some sort of a you know a car, um, but I'm much better. Have you, have you ever done that, Cade? No, no, nope. Dakota, you either. I like to what skiing, snowboarding. I've never skied, but I've snowboarded. How'd that go? Fine. It's pretty fun. Yeah, I don't know. I I feel like when you strap my two legs together and I'm supposed to turn. That's death for me. But if I got two legs and I can independently operate them and I can lean in and out, I can ski. Skiing's, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not world class, but I can get down to the bottom of the hill in record time because slowing down is kind of a bitch for me. But I can, <laughs> I can, I can get there fast and I can I've, stay up. I've yeah. never been anywhere that has a big enough slope for, for skiing. I should say. I've never been in the position to, to do it. You never been to like perfect north or anything? Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, we'll get you a babysitter, and you and you and uh, you and Audrey can go next winter. We'll have yeah. uh, it'll be great. I'll do it next winter. Yeah, that's perfect. Looking uh, looking forward to that. We'll put it on the calendar. So, this is a fun episode. We've talked about this just a little tiny bit. I think Dakota and I, when we've gone on other shows, have been asked about this, but we never really have had this conversation of how we got together and what got us interested. And I truly need to thank the Patreon folks because I don't know what the secret sauce is that makes folks support the show and like this show and appreciate the show. Um, but I appreciate them very much. You look at a lot of shows and they, they flame out really fast. Um, and we're up over 150 episodes now, which is phenomenal. Um, and to me, this show has been like a golf game that pays for itself. You know, there's a lot of hobbies and generally on Thursday nights, this is what we do. And we get to hang out with our buddies and our friends and, and talk to interesting people. And, uh, thankfully the audience has appreciated it. Uh, but I wanted to kind of take a little bit of time uh, and talk through amongst ourselves how we got here, how um, how we developed the skills or the interest to sit here and talk into microphones and what happened. Because um, everybody jokes about a podcast is just where three or more white guys are gathered together. Uh, and I think that we're actually there's there's more to it than that. Right. <laughs> so sometimes we'll start <laughs> there has to be beer too i've, I've never chase, developed any skills chase has got his four loco that's uh that that i guess you need to have alcohol of some sort too oh, does yeah. that say it's 12 percent? yes that's like three beers right there in that bottle i know it's great <laughs> my girls get wasted off this i haven't had it since college but it's pretty good but you're back i'm back all right does this mean you're back in college i mean you're kind yeah, of in college cor- kind of i mean i will be this summer I mean, I'm going to school currently, but I'll right. be officially in college this summer. Because you need the NFL Sunday ticket. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is the only reason. It isn't to better my life. It's so no, I can get the it's, Sunday it's, it's ticket the without Sunday direct ticket. TV. 
All right. So let's let's get into this, Dakota. You you independent of me had a dream or a, an idea that you wanted to get into this kind of a thing at one point. Is that correct? I did. Yeah. I don't, I don't you remember. talked about this. I, All right. This whole premise of this damn thing was based on you talking <laughs> about this at one point, like two years ago. That was the start of this. So I won't. Okay. I won't come back. You can Has jump in Has it only here. been two years? Uh, no, we've been, we're right at three now yeah. uh, on the existence of this program. Um, when I first met Dakota, he was really into like YouTube videos. Right. And so that was, yeah, was, was kind of what I thought is that you were a, into. It wasn't podcasting or like what? a show like this. I wanted to make YouTube videos oh. of doing to things. be communicating, of right? doing using, things using instead the of just sitting on my butt talking to people. <laughs> so we've never achieved that dream. So you want to closest vlog. we got was Cade and Chris trying to annihilate each other at Cade's house. <laughs> I mean, we could. The, so here's the here's the correlation: is that there's this line between the amount of time it takes to vlog and edit video and produce yes. that content mm. versus. We, we give you a pretty good product on the podcast side and it still takes, I mean, there's probably two hours of planning ahead of a show, the hour and a half, two hours to actually record the show. Um, and then Dakota has, uh, you know, Dakota writes show notes ahead of time. That's time he spends. And then I have to spend another hour, hour and a half on the back end writing show uh, descriptions, audio editing, putting files together, putting things up on all the social media uh, sides, uploading files. So all in, Every episode we do of this show is probably eight to 12 man hours to, yeah. to put a show out there. Yeah. And then that just grows exponentially. If you want anything edited, if you want any mm-hmm. video edited, if you want to do the vlogging, um, man, that's a, that's it's next mainly level just because complication. I, I don't really know how to do it. And I, any software that I have on my computer to do it with is just the free junk that you can find. Because I don't, we don't do it enough to spend money on something like that. So it, it just, that makes it harder. Um, it, yeah, it, the video is weird because it is a lot more difficult than what anybody, if you've never done it before, it's way more difficult than what you think it would be. You think you're like, oh, you just, you know, you put the spice the pieces together and it fits and then it, it's there. There's so much more. And podcasting, it's long form. So we don't have to, if you, we were doing an actual radio show, you have to worry about a clock and you say, okay, I've got in a 60 minute show. Now all of a sudden you have to break it up into four segments, right? Four smaller segments and they have to be tight and they have to be between seven and nine minutes each or whatever podcast. We just do what we want. We've got the, we've got the time to fill and we can, we can just run. If, if you're vlogging, all of a sudden now it becomes more than just the time you set aside for the podcast. You have to find something interesting to do and you have to go cover it. And then all the, all the people around you have to suffer through or, or be appreciative or accepting of, Hey, we're going to take this, this trip or this thing we're going to do. We're going to go to the, we're going to go to Cade's farm and we're going to videotape what's going on in this farm today. <laughs> and we're going to make it fun. And that it could definitely be done, yeah. but I feel like that's almost more all consuming. Those yes. guys that do that, one hundred percent. I used to watch this guy on YouTube. I started when I was thirteen, and he did daily vlogs, and he did it every day for ten years. And like I, I watched him religiously for like four years. And he started out with his girlfriend, and they got married. And like you watch his whole life, and then they got divorced, and then he <laughs> has a new wife, and now he has kids. He had brain cancer a couple times like it's crazy like he's <laughs> like literally he's filmed his whole life and I, I haven't watched every video i probably haven't watched him in a year or two but i think he Have just checked up on him since the cancer he, he, he's alive i still get his updates like on my phone but like he went from like he's gone really really quiet guys i'm <laughs> When I'm he sure fir- he's doing When fine. he first started, he had like a million views an episode, they like in the him hundred off thousands. <laughs> and now he's got like fifteen thousand um every wow. every video. Like he's just dropped, but it's just because all his his viewers have grown up. They're not fourteen yeah. anymore. They're not now 14 they're thirty. Anymore. They have their mortgages. own lives, you know? Yeah. It's just weird. I don't know how you could do that every day. Yeah. It seems like a lot. I, like ten years. I'm not sure that my wife would have the patience for me. <laughs> That's <laughs> why he had a second one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, and that's probably the case is that he had to he had to cycle through one of them to find one that was cool with it. Um, so for me, this is I, I don't know how I got to this um, or how I how I rem- had this memory, uh, but in the last week or so, I had this vivid recollection of. And there's a tape somewhere, 
uh, and I'm sure it's truly horrible, but I think in fourth grade, I was given a school assignment that I needed to do some sort of a history documentary. Uh, and I, the specifics of it obviously have escaped me because it's been quite some time since I was in fourth grade. Uh, but the end result was, is that I did an interview, a sit down interview, not too dissimilar from, from this with my grandfather and my great grandmother talking about, uh, it was local history. So kind of the same t- type of conversation we would have here on boss hog. I had that, uh, in fourth grade. So it'd been 1991, 1992, uh, sitting on my grandparents' couch with a VCR recorder, right? The video cassette, the full tape you put in the, in the deal. <laughs> And I'm sure we couldn't edit it, so it had to be horrible. Yeah. It'd be one take or or awful or you know, <laughs> broken you up into a, a yeah, thousand like different a, terrible deals. A wooden kitchen spoon as a fake microphone. <laughs> no, I it was I, I think we just sat on the couch and had the conversation. Um uh, and I, I, I distinctly remember having gone back and watched it at after the fact and I was asking questions about things like the economy of you know Messina in the nineteen fifties, right? So we're recording this in the nineties. And I'm asking about stuff that happened 40 or 50 years before that. So it was the oldest history that I could get a hold of as a nine year old, like somewhat us asking someone what it was like in the eighties, right? Yeah, seventies or eighties. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's weird, but yeah, but it, it, it's the, the furthest back you could go and in, in the limited resources of a nine year old. Uh, but I remember having those conversations and having some fun with it. Uh, and then it was, you know, set up where I would just sit down and talk and I had my list of questions and I, they would answer me the best they could and try to take me seriously, which is the same thing that happens with our guests here now. Um, but I, and I never really thought of it as being formative for this, uh, until the last week or so. And I said, man, that's actually remarkably spot on that I got from a fourth grade social studies assignment yeah, or history assignment. So doesn't pay the bills, doesn't do anything for me, but it did. Yeah. It was formative to, to what came along. And then I got into, I got comfortable around a microphone when I was 16 or 17 to announcing horse shows and did that for about 15 years through 4-H. Um, and then, you know, got involved with the, the We're Libertarians podcast and started uh, dabbling around that and then said, you know, we this is something we could take on the road. Uh, and then I kidnapped Dakota one night and, and we've been here ever since. I still think it's, I'm still stuck on the fact that Cade's, one of Cade's kids would be asking his Cade's dad about what the economy was like in the 70s. Yeah. And that being the same as you as a kid that age asking your grandparents what it was like in, in the 1954 50s. when they yeah. were building the St. Lawrence Seaway. That is insane. That just is totally mind blowing. <laughs> <mind-blowing. laughs> yeah. It would have been like your, your great grandfather is still living. Yeah. Uh, it would have been like, you, you know, your, you know, your kids here in about five years asking him about what was going on when he was our age, mm-hmm. right? 35 or 40 years old. Yeah. Uh, that is the same, the same thing. Hmm. So, and now the cool thing going Strange full times. circle is that I'm uh, this later this summer, I get to go back to, uh, to New York, um, in June and I'm going to bring Sarah there. So Sarah is going to get to see that. I would love I to. I thought you were going to say, I'm going to impregnate. <laughs> Sarah there. I was like, wow. So the the plan as of Man, right now deep Chase, family ties. Chase, it's a tr- family it, tradition to embrace your wife if in we New could York. Just, Very good luck. If we could just get our hands on that couch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so we're gonna go back up there and we're gonna see the seaway that they were that they built that we were talking that about. He that he was they didn't conceived see, on. Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, if I check where my parents were and the records of the time. Uh, I, something about the Oklahoma oil fields and my parents uh, would be the, uh, <laughs> in the early eighties, uh, circus 1982 that, uh, that would have gone down. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's kind of how I got into this. And then, uh, obviously I had some political background. Uh, so this show started, started, uh, started there. Is that for me? Is that, is that note for me? No, that you wrote that for oh, that me was, a few that weeks was, that ago. Was, that was months ago. Yeah. 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 You were scribbling over there, so I wasn't sure what uh, what's going on. Making notes. So what's it, what's it say? Move closer. <laughs> move closer. I thought you were a professional. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It says move closer. Anybody who we pass a lot of show. notes around here. All right. So, how did you agree to this, Chase? How how did this come about? Where you said, "Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll come on your show," and then I'm just going to keep coming on the show. Well, what happened? How do you get any joy out of this? 
I don't. <laughs> See, like, <laughs> so I, I hear you say, oh, yeah, people come up to me in public and say, oh, you're on the Boss Hog of Liberty. It happened today. I don't get that. I go to Kroger or Walmart and I just get dirty looks from old people. <laughs> and that's how I know they know who I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that sounds about right. When this show first started, I was living in Florida at the time. And I think I saw Dakota post something about it. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I started listening to it and I was like, oh, man, he's big time now. <laughs> I was like, he's got like a thousand listeners. Like, that's pretty cool. And then I came back. And I think I went to a party at your house, and there was nothing but drama. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I met you, and I was like, oh, this is the guy that thought I was gay. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And then I thought you were gay, too. <laughs> and, then, and, yet, and yet neither one of us made a move on each other, Chase. Well, that- Weird. Okay. So All Chase right. has made some moves. <laughs> <laughs> Only a couple. We have talked so then about we, you guys cuddling whenever you thought no one was watching. We, we've wrestled and then a few wrestling times. when you thought no one was Listen, watching. Chase is Chase is one of the warmest and most cuddly men I've ever I'm very, been around. I'm a very good cuddler. <laughs> so, anyways, we developed a friendship, and then you're like, "Hey, you should come on the show," and I was like, "I, I don't think so." <laughs> and then I came on the show, and I can remember like my first few times on the show, I was so nervous to say anything, so I was trying to be super professional. I probably said like 10 words the whole show. I, th- I think Chris Lamb was on one. or uh, Chris Not Lamb's Chris Lamb. Uh, Jonathan, uh, Jeremy, Lamb. Jonathan Lamb. Oh, Chris yeah. Lamb has been on, yeah. And he was running for what? C- Congress? Yeah, he was running yeah. for like, Congress. Hol- I was like, holy shit, this, this show's the big <laughs> time. This is going to get me my ticket. I mean, you've got Liberty University credentials interviewing I do. people running for Congress. This I went is- there for four months. Yeah. And then that's, that's kind of how I got into it. It's not something I really ever wanted... I mean, I've always wanted to kind of do sports radio, but this isn't really the show for that. <laughs> I mean, I really thought Barstool would have hired me my, by now, but I don't have any skills. So your your influence has been sports, right? That's that's what you listen to for fun. That you're generally you- well. I mean, I listen to a, a a broad spectrum of things. I'll get into that later. We allow sports. I'm wearing an Indianapolis Colts hoodie. Yeah, I've covered sports before. All right. But I mean, most I mean, of your listeners are lame. So, <laughs> <laughs> point number one, they're our listeners. You're a part of the family. That's true. Uh, point, I love most of point you. Point two, there's a disclaimer at the beginning of the show that says this is a, about us and what we find interesting. So it could be politics, it could be sports, it could be comedy, so it at, could be crocheting. At the time, I think I was listening to a lot of Mike and Mike in the morning back when the show was good before mm. they got rid of the rid of one Mike. I don't think that show was ever. Good. It was really. good. I'm a counterculture guy. I would. I listen Steve, to it every Steve Zabin, day. Steve Zabin, Scott Lynn, and uh, Steve Solomon. Uh, that, so on Fox Sports is my. I was my like, jam. yeah, I'll do this show like once or twice, and then I'll get on with ESPN, and they'll hire me, and that'll yeah. be it. Come the next Joey Molinaro. Joey has had an amazing, he's, amazing turn. He's been blowing up. Joey is uh, getting millions and millions and millions back. Uh, back at uh, way back at the. Uh, NCAA title game. Uh, Twitter flew him out to uh, to sit in their booth and have some fun. And he met Drew Brees. He and Drew Brees cut a little thing. Uh, he's had he's a big shot. He's now. had quite the thing. I don't know if we could book Jolie Molinar on this show. He's again. Uh, he's going to be some guy. I say yeah, I, I did a podcast with him once. Yeah, have you met Joey? Yeah, he you was at your wedding. Joey. You were at the wedding. Uh, you equally tried to not catch my uh, the garter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, there's that's one of my favorite pictures at, at, at all of my photos, Dakota, on um, that I take on my phone. The, the Google sends them to the cloud and then they get stuck on the TV on the Chromecast. So it cycles through and there's a, an incredible amount of pictures of Dakota and I on there uh, because every week we take back five pictures and they all go up there and they all <laughs> end up in the they all end up in the cloud. Uh, but, yeah, that picture, there's the picture of you, uh, you and the other boys at the. Uh, my wedding, uh, not wanting to catch the uh, catch the garter. Yeah, I still do that at every wedding I go to. Yeah, one of these times, man, your numbers going to be I, up. I can remember. I think it must have been. It was one time we were in Nashville, and it, I think it was Dakota's bachelor party. I don't know because you weren't puking on the street. I don't think. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember if a trip to Nashville I didn't puke on the street. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I've been on the show once or twice. And I was like, you know what, guys? I kind of want to be a villain. 
I kind of, I, I kind of want to, I want to be the guy that says things that people hate. <laughs> and Jared was like, "Oh no, man! No one could ever hate you. You, you can't, you can't be the, you can't be the villain. That's just not you. You're too lovable. You're too lovable." I was like, "Hold my beer." <laughs> <laughs> And then the next thing you know, you're drinking Four loco and eating Sour Patch Kids right here on the show. Oh, yeah. You're just lucky I don't have a dip in my mouth right now. <laughs> uh, we've already had that show. <laughs> <laughs> that was a host-only show. I mean, it wasn't like a congressperson was sitting yeah, across yeah, from me. Yeah. Cade, what about you? What's your What's influenced you? Uh, what, why, do you why do you think this is cool? And it, it, I probably started as a fan of like YouTube, just watching things on YouTube and... Um, I would say that mainly started with gun culture stuff. Uh, I was always following um, uh, different people uh, through the gun industry that I look for gear reviews and training and things like that. Um, I know there was like, I know Sage Dynamics is a big one. That's where I get most of my firearms training through still. Um, I, I was a big fan at one time of like Iraqi veteran 8888 and a few other Such and all them other guys that do all these gear reviews. And then, that is what kind of led me to podcasts because I ended up, I think one day I ended up watching a Joe Rogan video like on, on his YouTube. And then I, th I realized, Oh, this is free through an app that's already on my phone. And then I got in just to the world of podcasts. And then during my work day, like at work, I would just have my earphones in listening to podcasts. And, uh, that was where I found, or I kept listening to Joe Rogan. I found, Jocko podcast and your mom's house and all these other comedian type podcasts and things. And uh, believe it or not, I really don't listen to any agriculture type podcast. I probably should look more into mm -hmm. those, but maybe you uh, should I start don't. one. Yeah. How many good agriculture well, podcasts we, are there? We do have, there be we do have East Central Indiana's favorite tractor. Podcasts. We are, we are yeah. heard in combines all over so, the country. So but that started because don't cut into our base. I'm, I'm <laughs> anti-farmer and not you, Cade, but. Just the ones that are the, in the my way on farmers. the road. <laughs> You're anti small farmers. Kate's a a big farmer. Yes. There you so, go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's <laughs> not as big as he was five years ago. <laughs> but I think, uh, yeah, I think we uh, somehow uh, there was a project that me and Jeremiah were included on, and uh, that's where me and him kind of started being friends. And mm -hmm. then I added all you guys just through the podcast listening, and I started listening to your podcast and just knowing that it was local and it was interesting. And then one day we had something where you guys came out and shot guns at my house and ended up inviting me. Yeah. Yep. And we had, uh, yeah. And we had you come on the podcast and mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, then we immediately made you a co-host. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, I don't know if you guys were looking or not, but that's how it happened. Remember when I first came on the podcast and every time I drink a beer, I was like, Oh, you got to pour it in a glass. I was like, if people see this, they'd be pissed. I've came a long way. <laughs> <laughs> no fear anymore. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, you were Kate. scared that your grandpa would see you drinking. I, now I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> uh, that's dark. Uh, that's really depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, hey, I, wait, 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 wait. Let's make it worse. Why don't we have to worry about it? Because he has dementia <laughs> <laughs> and cancer. <laughs> oh, man. That one's really rough. So sad. <laughs> it is. It's, uh, it's very that's sad. That's really sad. He's doing well, though. That is good. He got through chemo. He gained like a bunch of weight. Most people lose weight. He gained weight. Hey, there you go. It's weird because he has dementia. And you'd think he'd like, most people are like, oh man, I have to go through chemo. I have to go through radiation. Like, it's going to be bad. And they get sick and they lose a bunch of weight, which is really sad. But like, for some reason, like, since he has dementia, he doesn't realize it. And he looks forward to going. Mm. It's just something to do. Some, it's just something mm -hmm. to do. Like yeah. he's, like I said, so he I eats all the time now. Going to the doctor. Blessing in disguise. Yeah, I it's guess. really weird. But Okay, Kate. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Moving on. Well, that was fun. <laughs> so I watched a guy on YouTube growing up. His name was FPS Russia. Uh huh. He shot a bunch of guns. Have you yeah. ever heard of him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's very famous. Yeah, I like him. I don't know. I, mean, I don't even know if he's really Russian. He just shot a lot of cool guns, and I like it. He got in a lot of trouble. Did he? Legal I, trouble. I don't know if he's a good guy. Yeah, I, I forget what it was for, but yeah, he got into a lot of legal trouble, and they like shut his. They shut everything down and like excommunicated him oh. from everything. 
Mm-hmm. Pro- probably not a good so. guy, but I enjoyed his videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were always fun to watch. Freedom it's kind of like Demolition free. Ranch. You ever watch that? Yeah. If you like FPS, cool. if you like FPS Russia, look at Demolition Ranch. He okay. does basically the yeah. same stuff. Demolition Ranch is a cool channel. Yeah. I've never heard of FPS Russia, but I'll have to check it out. Mm-hmm. I mean, I watched his videos. Probably it like might still five, be five five or ten years ago. I don't. Yeah. Know. I mean, it was a long time ago. I, it might have been before I got to college. Yeah, it's been five or six years now that he's been in trouble. I yeah. think I don't know if he's in prison or I think he's out now. I don't oh, know. so he's probably not a good dude. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, you, I think yeah. they, they killed his dog and everything. Yeah, the oh, ATF shit. came down on the him. The <laughs> well, he, 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 he had cool videos. You should watch them. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a lot of agencies that'll kill your dog. <laughs> <laughs> the ATF, they just. They, you don't even have to be in trouble. It's they, probably my ATF favorite Facebook page it. to watch. Hillary Clinton just kills they you. They get so <laughs> yeah. roasted on Facebook comments, the ATF. The ATF Every yeah. time they post something, the comments are just a shit storm of people roasting them. About killing it's dogs. Great. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it be terrible to work for the organization that has to deal with all of the vices? Alcohol. Well, we like that. Wouldn't yeah. it We're be terrible it. to work for an organization that shouldn't exist? <laughs> Hey, try this one. <laughs> <laughs> watermelon. I'm going to be doing the watermelon crawl, buddy. Four loco. I, yeah. I might like that one better. I'm going to go use the restroom. Warning. <laughs> it's me. Warning. Contains alcohol. Hey, we ID. Oh, yeah. Did they you, did ID. Did you card me? They carded mm. me. Oh, my God. That's like a Jolly Rancher. It's that pretty is, good, right? <laughs> it's so tart. And it and doesn't kill so you anymore. Much, so much like a Jolly Rancher. I got to say, I drank the one and I'm kind of feeling it. Oh, I, I can imagine, uh, Chase. Um, what, what kind of alcohol do those have in them? I'm not sure. The good kind. <laughs> <laughs> Who even sells these? Are these gas station uh, production? Is that, is that where these uh, these come from? So, Cade, you do jujitsu, right? Uh-huh. You ever, like, they do they call it rolling? Mm-hmm. You ever roll with people that just smell really bad? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's Cade that smells like, really bad. Yeah, well, I'm actually pretty good about it. I'm pretty self conscious about it because at work, uh, when we're working with cattle and stuff, and I'm knee deep in manure all day, it kind of gets on your skin. So when you sweat, your sweat smells like manure. So yeah. I'm I'm pretty good about getting home and and getting uh, a good hot shower before I go rolling with anybody. Have you, do you do the competitions? Yes. Yep. Have you ever thought like, oh, I have a competition this weekend? I'm not going to shower the whole week. Yeah, I'd probably give you a little bit of an edge. Probably would. I don't think I'm going to do that, but <laughs> your, there's probably people. Your that wife do it. would probably hate it. Yeah, it's it's pretty gross. And most of the time, it's people that just don't wash their gi. I don't know if it's yeah. always them, but if you're sweating in that thing, I mean, when I go to class, I do normally do two hours of instruction, and then there's an hour of just straight rolling. Yeah, and it's five five to six minute periods for a whole hour long. And I, I basically don't take any breaks. There's there's maybe a 30-second break in between. Um, Does it ever get sexual? But no. No, not at all. Because I'm scared like I would be doing it. No. And then I pop a random, you know what? <laughs> and it'd just be awkward. I don't think I could go back. No, it's... And I mean, there, guys roll with girls. I mean, there's there's girls in class that you roll with. Oh, that's the, that's the way just, God intended it. Yeah, there's just... There, there's, there's nothing... <laughs> there's never been any issue where it's been weird or sexual. Not for me, anyway. I can't say that's probably the same for Do you think maybe Chase could accidentally make it weird? Chase would for sure make it weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna so, I'm gonna stick to playing video games. I, I with still my feel like that's gonna be an episode. We're gonna I'm gonna take you guys to class with me, and we're gonna see how you guys like it. So four loco. I is, just want to pick the skinniest kid, is and I'm just malt, gonna lay on top of him. Is a malt, I don't know. You probably beverage. still get wrecked. <laughs> probably. <laughs> no, I see you. I see you yeah. posting stuff about it, and I, I was just wondering. I was like, man, I wonder if he ever rolls with. With stinky people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's just like nasty sweat smell. That's intense. So I'm going to uh, do one of our trademark uh, transitions here. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Dakota, I got a question for you. You're in sure. the construction business, kind of. Kind of. Right? You're almost a real man. Yep. <laughs> um, you ever have a problem with your boots smelling really bad? This is You've been talking about this for quite some time, Chase. Yeah. You've been concerned about this. Your girlfriend already asked me what you can do. Well, I've never talked about this. it on the, the on the <laughs> show. 
Your I, girlfriend already asked me what I did to remedy this because yours have been such a problem. I was probably drinking a and whole she, bottle of wine. <laughs> she doesn't. She doesn't even live with what, you yet. What do you do? I have those little uh, deodorizer balls that you get at um, shoe stores, or you okay. can get them on Amazon. Pop them in there at nighttime. I guess I don't smell right my boots. Mine are bad. Mine they overpower bad. everything. Really? Like, like if you leave them in a room, it'll stink the room up. If I take them off at all. It's like, <laughs> and, okay, so I'll give you an so example. So now at, at this point, Chase mine, just showers in them. Mine, <laughs> I, the only reason I smell mine is I because I work out in the morning, my uh, boots go in my gym bag so yeah. I can change into those clothes after I get done working out. So if I don't have, if they smell horrible... Then yeah. they'll stink up my clothes for the rest of the day, too. So I'll give you an example. My boots smell so bad. All right? How bad do they smell? I, and I, I'll just tell you guys, Still I shower daily. Ten. I wash my feet daily because if I didn't, you would smell them. Like I was at you, work let, today. Let, when you wash your feet, do you like sit down on the floor in the tub and put your foot up high and scrub on it? With I, what do you? What, what do you? No, what do you I mean? I fully scrub. I go in between the toes. Like I gotta get them good. Or Is there a loofah involved? Bad. Oh yeah, like the rough <laughs> side too. Like both sides of the loofah have involved. You tried, have you tried maybe a little little more abrasion? Like you bring in the the Dremel tool with the cutoff wheel and just start rubbing it up and down on the. <laughs> I haven't done. I I probably should. I thought about getting one of those. Just the feet, mis- like washers or something, you know. I don't know. I've but never anyways, seen Chase so desperate about anything as he has. I'm this at top, work this today, topic. and a guy's been over beside me, fixing something in a panel, and he goes, "Who farted?" <laughs> and I, <laughs> I go, "I am so sorry. I didn't say so sorry because then I would sound like a bitch." But I go, "Oh, that's probably my feet." <laughs> I was like. My boots smell really bad. How do you guys get I, like I'm trying to get tips. You need to take Okay, you need to take the insoles out and you need to wash them. Yes, I've then, thought about that. Okay, yeah. Do that and then you need to also get the deodorizer balls. So what I've been doing but You need to make sure if you don't wash the insoles first then it's not going Yeah, it's not going to do help. anything. What I've been doing is I've been leaving them out in my garage. It's pig pen. I always I always blame Linus, but it's pig pen. You're and the pig some, pen of get some good socks that <laughs> are the job site. that are yeah. real real snug. Yeah, they and, and mind tight. you, I shower daily. At least have if you, I'm working. Have you thought about maybe a, a second shower? I like at, I at your lunch to, break, you I'm, join the well, gym I, and run over to the anytime and be like, not, hey guys. I'm and I'm I'm in a different area every time. Uh, anytime fitness. So they're everywhere. I'm at anytime fitness. Yeah. So go find it anytime and go shower at lunch. And by at anytime fitness, I have a membership, but I, I rarely go. But you can shower there. I could. <laughs> I know. I talked to our mutual friend Kyle at the gym the other day, and he said, I talked Chase into getting a membership, but he never comes. So I feel bad for talking about <laughs> I spend like, his money. <laughs> I, I spend like 50 bucks a month for nothing. That's what he said. Is that the only thing you spend money on that you don't use? He said he feels well, bad for talking you into it. And now you waste your, all your money. So anyways, <laughs> my boot routine. Do you want a membership to my home gym? <laughs> I might need one. I probably won't show up. Uh, I'll, take, I'll take your money. <laughs> my boot routine. Okay, yeah, it's only 20 to him. You're so the now perfect member. If you, guys help me, if you guys help me talk him into it, I'll give 25 back to the show. That's perfect. My boot routine is I leave him outside or in the garage. And then when I put him on in the morning... I spray them with sprayable deodorant. Maybe you should do it before you put them on. Like, I do. Like I've when you that. take them off. I do. And it I've works. Put, um, I put um, like deodorizing powder in them. Yeah. I thought they work that. day. How often yeah, do you replace the insoles? I haven't replaced the insoles yet. Maybe, maybe throw out the old insoles. Yeah, and probably well, insoles. that's the next insoles. step. That's also, the next step. Yeah. I would have done that takes ago. Take out those insoles. Go to like a CVS or Walgreens. Even, I think even Walmart. They have the custom Dr. Scholl's stand thing where you stand on the sensor and it tells you what insole to get and you need to get those because those are the best. Okay. Odor readers. There used to be a product uh, sold called odor readers. That I think would, that's that would work on that. Product. It was, I, 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 I think that is the brand that makes the deodorant balls. Yeah. So the, uh, well, thanks for calling in with this question, Chase. This is good. This is good radio. Uh, I, I've there's always a had lot Dr. Scholl's of, There's insoles. a lot of working people out there that listen to us. And they, <laughs> some of them probably have the same problem. Dang, my feet stink. Thanks, Chase. <laughs> You're welcome. And also, um, 
if your boots get wet during the day, make sure you take them home. Like even if you got to just beat the hell out of your drying machine, make sure that those puppies are bone dry before you wear them again. For real. <laughs> Do you prefer the, the laces or the slip ons? Laces. Slip ons are horrible. They're horrible for your feet. I like your both, but I, currently I'm wearing the the laces. The slip ons are great because they're so easy to put on and so easy to slip right off. But man, they're just bad on your feet. So bad. So I got a new sticker for my helmet. I was pretty proud of it. I didn't earn anything. I just went to the convention my company has every year. But, but I did make it in the video that oh. they, sh- they showed everyone. You're a star. It was very embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, they had me on there saying, I had a piece of strut in my hand, mind you. Yeah, going strut. We are electric. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I had the cheesiest, I had the cheesiest fucking okay, smile on my face. We're going to need to copy that for the show. <laughs> it, it was just embarrassing. That is hilarious. <laughs> a piece of unistrut? Yeah. Was it the big strut or it was the big strut? strut. It wasn't junior strut. I knew what I was doing. <laughs> it would have been funnier if it was junior strut. <laughs> they they hilarious. played it multiple times. And everyone that works for my company was at, at that convention. <laughs> and then what made it worse was I had Do the same shirt on. Do people know you yet? <laughs> you had the same <laughs> <laughs> The first day of the convention, I had the same shirt on that I had in that video. So everyone immediately <laughs> recognized <laughs> this guy for the video. Oh, that's so good. That's hilarious. It was awful. Oh, gosh. Yeah. All right. So the other thing I want to... We're always... We're all consuming other media. Oh, yeah. The media I've consumed has changed a lot. Other than sports, I really don't watch any tv like i very difficult to get me to catch the news actually on you know the local news almost non-existent um regular straight up like scripted tv shows on tv i think i'm still watching better call saul and and that's about it so it's when it comes on the air there's probably five or six shows that i'll actually go watch on demand and that's a that's literally almost it and then live sports that's all I do for TV. Otherwise, oh, I it's, binge it's, shit all the time. It's YouTube, but it's a binge show, so it's time shifted. It's not regular yeah. cable, right? So, and I, I will binge watch YouTube. I will binge listen to podcasts. That's that's where my eyes have shifted to. Uh, and I'll watch a channel, and I'll, I'll, I tend. I don't know if it's because of this show or because of narrow casting now, but I'm, I'm definitely trying to support or find myself supporting local content creators or niche content creators more than I am saying, Oh yeah, let's just go watch this thing that NBC made. Right. Is that, is that the way you look at stuff now, Kate yes. as well? Yeah, I think so for sure. And I think that more than the cable cutters or the cord cutters that, that are changing the way media is done. I think that behavior has changed it. Not, not that we're yeah. just watching in a different way. It's that we're watching different stuff and we don't, we don't necessarily want the well, big a, national show. Uh, it was a lot of folks who started cutting the the cord before everyone else and needed something to watch. So independent content creators had a whole market that they could re- reach that, uh, that was the only media that they could consume the stuff that was on YouTube, on Facebook watch and places like that where, I mean, now every, every other giant media outlet has got their own, platform to stream from and their own streaming service but nine times out of ten the stuff that you see um you know content creators on youtube whether it be huge people like Rhett and link or um even smaller folks like us is a lot of times more <clears throat> i don't want to say it's better but it can be more valuable you get more out of it it's more detailed and it's less I don't know if it's less filtered or it's more honest, right? So what's your favorite YouTube channel? So I've been uh, right now, if I'm just watching, there's like three, this is really silly, right? Like this is, this is where you feel as naked and exposed as you can be because they are so niche and so stupid and so silly, right? Um, I've really been watching and I've just found this in the last little while. Um, dude's got like a million subscribers and I'm not saying that I watch this constantly, but I've, I've definitely binged a few nights here lately. Uh, a guy named Hoovy, Hoovy's Garage. He's in, I think he's in Kansas City. 
uh, and he basically buys a total junk car and then resells it or he fixes it up. He brings it to his mechanic and the mechanic fixes it up and he rings up the bill and says, yeah, it's going to be $6,000 to fix this piece of junk. So he'll go out on auto trader or something and buy the absolute cheapest Cadillac Seville from 2000 that he can find or whatever it is. So he's got a Hummer. He's got a, a, a GMC um, Typhoon in, uh, in teal, uh, which was this ridiculous, basically an S10 or S15, mm-hmm. uh, but souped up with turbocharger that would blow away any sports car of that era. Um, just all kinds of crazy, crazy junk. And then he, it'll be barely running or barely functional. He'll buy an old Lincoln and the dude's got probably a, an eight car garage with lifts in it. So he probably has 24 cars. He's got a DeLorean and they, they all have problems, right? He doesn't spend more than $5,000 on any of them. Um, <laughs> and to me, it's like, it's the redneck rich thing. Like it's hilarious because yeah. he'll yeah. go out and he'll buy this, this, one of the cars he has was something that Warren Buffett had purchased in 1980 oh, so, and wow. it came down to him. So I was on, on Facebook not too long ago, looking at a marketplace, looking at uh, some SUVs and the same kind of thing happened. I found a, a Ted Nugent owned uh, <laughs> Chevy, Chevy Suburban three quarter ton and they wanted like 2,400 bucks. I'm like, I, I tried to send it to our boy, Mike, Mark Brim and be like, Mark, yeah, you, I know this isn't a square body, but you need to own Ted Nugent <laughs> Suburban. You know, the, Lloyd Braun's, uh, not Lloyd Braun, uh, John Voight's uh, uh, Chrysler was a thing on, on, on Seinfeld. Yeah. You've got to yeah. have, you've got to have the Suburban. So that's, that's, that's one that I've gotten into. And then I also, more than anything else, I like stuff. I, I like to learn. Mm-hmm. I don't sit there and, and watch just nerd. Junk. Yeah. That, and that's, I think we all, if you're listening to a podcast, you probably have this core in you. If you're a part of a podcast, you'll go, I call it going down the rabbit hole. Um, so I will do that in whatever I'm into at the time. If it's fishing, I'm going to watch guys, how they fish and how, you know, the tools and the technology they it have. Ha- it hasn't helped you yet. It does not help, but man, my boat floats, uh, camping, right? Like the, the camping thing. I've learned an awful lot about our campers and different things you can do. Um, hitch systems, all of that by, by watching those. And it's painful. Like I know it's painful for those around me. Cause I'll sit there and I'll watch one video and I go, oh, I'll watch this one too. Or you want to learn about places or if you're going to take a trip or, you know, we've got a cruise that, uh, that, that occurred and I'll want to know about the places and the opportunities that are there. So you'll say, oh, I'm going to go to, you know, to San Juan. Let me watch some videos and stuff that's available in San Juan and see what's there. Mm-hmm. So I will, I will spend my time researching that and it's, it's educational. It's the same kind of junk that the government used to force on you and, you know, educational program on a Saturday morning, right? Uh, same thing happening, but you do it yourself and it's from independent contract content creators. So I'd imagine you guys all have your own confessions of the stuff you watch too. That's not mainstream. Chase like YouTube. Yeah. yeah. YouTube. I mean, I don't watch a lot of YouTube anymore. I mean, I'll hit it. I'll hit a couple Rhett and Lake videos every now and again. I'll go on like hot streak where I watch their videos for a couple weeks and then I go not watching them for months. You know, growing up though, I, I watched them a lot. Um, I mean, almost every video. Um, they were a big part of my teenage years. Um, and then the other one was the the guy I talked about earlier, the one that blogged his whole life. I, I watched almost every video up until I went to college. I mean, we're talking about every day. I mean, it's crazy. Like, you see him go through his whole life. It's it's weird to think like when he started making those videos, he was like 23. Now I'm like 24 and he's in his mid thirties and it's just, he's it, still doing it. Well, he, he makes videos like multiple times a week, but he doesn't do it every day now, uh. <laughs> but he has the Guinness book of world records for like most conse- consecutive videos in a row. Um, but it's just weird because you you literally see his whole life through. I feel that way about Rhett and Link. It, it, you see yeah. him progress, you know. Yeah. Whenever I was in high school, Rhett and Link had just started out, and they were just writing goofy songs and goofy then, songs, and then doing commercials for yeah. people. And then, well, and then you watch them um, pack up all their stuff to follow their dream of having a YouTube channel and move to California, and. Then they get their own TV show. Yep. And now they have a daily show that they put out and it's, and now they're in their forties. Yeah. So it's with, really weird. With I kids. Mean, and Yeah. And I've been watching them since I was 13. For yeah. 10 years. And their content has morphed with 
time as they have seen how the consumers want to have their videos put out. And it's interesting to see how much they've changed that, you, but it's still very good. YouTube's content. different because like most people who, who make YouTube videos are start at least started out as regular people. You know, like yeah. you see a movie or you see a show and like they're actresses or actors. But like Rhett and Link, they were what, engineers when they started out? Something like that. Yeah. Heck, just regular people. Regular people. And now like they're making a lot of money off their videos. And like this you, is their only job. It's their only job. It's just I don't know. But yeah. I think uh I consume a lot of YouTube. I follow one guy, his name's uh Jimmy Duresta. And he is, um, he's a, a guy that, um, like something that, that, um, as I've gotten into making things and just uh, and like trying my hand at different, uh, like furniture making and different things. Cause I've always been someone who liked to tinker and I, that's just, my dad was the same way. So I was kind of raised in that atmosphere. Anyway, this guy is a professional tinkerer. <laughs> And hit, like if a bar or some other uh, establishment wants uh, some custom tables made, they need beer taps made or anything like that, then he's kind of the guy that they go to and he makes these videos of making the stuff. And so I watch that and then I kind of like how you were talking with the campers and things. I watch that and go, I could so, do that. Well, that's the kind of tool that I need in my shop if I want to do something like that. And, or, oh, so this is how this is made. Uh, it's, it's a very uh, similar, but his, I watch, I watch uh, his videos like every night before I go to sleep. That's pretty much the only person I watch on YouTube now. There's a couple more that I've, uh, not just on the YouTube side, but also on the podcast side, the Marshall Pruitt podcast. I'm a pretty regular contributor to his question and answer every week. Uh, that, that podcast has been around for, uh, for three years. Uh, he just crossed over 4 million downloads in that three years. Uh, in May he was at 3 million and now he's at 4 million. So in seven months wow. he picked up another million mm-hmm. downloads. Uh, and that's in the, that's in the racing world. Uh, dinner with racers is another podcast that I've watched that actually Jared Birch and one of our patrons, uh, got me into, uh, last May and they got picked up and they're on Amazon prime now. So their oh, podcast wow. is now videotaped and put on Amazon Prime, and then they'll actually animate portions of it because they do interviews. They sit down, they they con- have a conversation with somebody over dinner, and then they will uh, they'll animate. So if the guy's talking about something, if he's talking about a plane ride, all of a sudden they'll they'll animate the characters, and they'll be in a plane ride, and they'll be describing what he's describing. They'll animate, uh, very very neatly done. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you, Cade, any any of, that you want to confess, or are you going to keep them um, all tight for the best? I, I don't really follow a whole lot of different YouTube channels as close as I used to. Um, like I said, it started with kind of gun industry stuff. I still keep up with a lot of that. Uh, Aaron Cowan from Sage Dynamics, he he does a lot of really good gear review videos that uh, there's a lot of good information if you're trying to buy any current mainstream type gun gear and things like that. There's a lot of good information to be had there. Um <clears throat> Bomar bow hunting, Josh Bomar. Uh, he's a pretty good guy. He's, he films all of his hunts, uh, mostly white tail deer, which is what I'm interested in too. Uh, and then he'll show, well, I mean, mule deer doesn't get you much, uh, much, much good around here. Well, he's, he just moved what he just moved out. I, th- I want to say to Iowa, they just moved out West. So he's got a lot more options now. Um, but he does like tips and tricks for like bow hunting, different gear and stuff for bow hunting. And then he also does like nutrition, uh, he does some bodybuilding and kind of things in the weight room and stuff like that to see. Um, mm. So kind of it combines both of those things that I like a lot. Uh, but yeah, as far as YouTube goes, that's pretty much where, unless I need to learn something or I'm trying to fix something, I go to YouTube and typically somebody's got it. Yeah. Somebody's got a video of what I'm messing oh, with. Yeah. <laughs> that is the most amazing part of living when we do now is that yeah. you can have, Hey, you know, I've got to change this on a vehicle yep. or I want to, you know, and I've used that it's, multiple it's times. Oh yeah. 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 It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, two more that I have real quick before we finish off. Uh, so I don't know how I discovered it, but movie sins. If you are you guys familiar with that YouTube channel at all, this guy will sit there and watch a video and look at all of the things that are horribly wrong. So be like, <laughs> everything that's wrong with national lampoons, Christmas vacation or yeah. whatever, uh, or Forrest Gump or whatever, you know, you go across the list back to the future. 
And I could sit there for three hours and watch those where it's mm-hmm. a movie I've seen, you've seen inside and out, you know, every bit of it. And the guy just calls out everything that's wrong, quote unquote wrong with that yeah. movie. Uh, that's hilarious. I always liked the mystery science 3000 theater where the, they'd show all the B movies and the guy would, they would sit in the front and then make fun of it the whole way through. It always made the movies better. It's perfect. <laughs> Uh, and then the last one that I had just sitting here, uh, there's a guy in uh, Louisville uh, who's a dealer uh, for Chevrolet. So he's one of the salesmen. Actually, it's Louisville. Okay. In Louisville, <laughs> in Louisville. Uh, and he's called the Chevy dude. You follow him there. And the uh, the Cadillac, or not Cadillac, the uh, Chevy Corvette uh, 8 uh, is out. And that's had massive, uh, massive push here lately. Uh, but he, that guy will go through everything about buying a car, what to look for when you're trading a car, when you're buying, you know, financing it, uh, what dealers should be doing, how you should be treated right. Um, and then a lot of stuff on the new tech and the new vehicles that are coming out. So, all right. With that, we're probably uh, at the point where we need to be wrapping this up. Uh, Chase, is there anything that we needed to talk about that uh, that we left out? Uh, you feel uh, good? Scorekeeper over here. I never feel good. I always have a couple questions. Cade. Uh, for everybody, what are some of the current podcasts you listen to the most? Oh, for sure, Joe Rogan. Um, it feels weird to say that because I feel like everybody says that. <laughs> but, it, I mean, it is one of the most listened to podcasts that's out there. Um, probably past that. I like. I really like Your Mom's House with Tom Segura and Christina I like P. that a lot. Have you heard, uh, what is it, Two Bear? Two bears, two bears, one, one cave. cave. Yeah, I listen to that one a lot. That's yeah, all I haven't one. heard that one yet. It's yeah, it's with it's Bert funny. Kreischer and Tom Segura. Um, I like the fighter and the kid, Brandon Schaub. Okay, and uh, Brian Callen. They're they're pretty good together. Um, I like Theo Vaughn. Um, Theo Vaughn's um, great. Yeah, this past weekend, uh, and then he's also got one with Brandon Schaub where they go together, and it's called The King and the Sting, and it's it's pretty good too. They go back and forth with just they're both just funny people. Yeah. So it's it's fun to listen to those guys go back and forth. Um I like I actually like Crime Junkie a lot. They go through like different crime scenes and it's yeah. these, it's it's Indianapolis based and uh it's these two girls that are that go through different crimes and murders and they talk about serial killers and all kinds of good stuff. It's a really good one. I I binge listen that one through Harvest. Just about every day through <laughs> Harvest. I listen I listen to those episodes. So they were pretty good. What about you Dakota? I, uh, it's on my phone right now on my podcast player. <laughs> There's a lot. I, I listen to quite a few. Um, I of course listen to Joe Rogan. Um, Oh, I forgot Jocko podcast too. That's yeah. I listen to Jocko I, I like podcast. Yeah. I listen to time suck, which is Dan Cummins podcast. I know that there's a few people who listen to us that also listen to time suck. And then I have a couple of other ones. I listen to Making Sense, which is Sam Harris's. Um, I also listen to a podcast that is interesting. It's called Unbelievable, which but it's from uh, the UK, and they bring in a um, a scientist and a pastor, and they debate the existence of God from different angles. I'm gonna have to listen to this. So right. it's actually really cool. Uh, <laughs> but it's cool. like it's not just the existence of God from like the the same thing it's people who have an expertise in a specific area of study and it's called that, unbelievable right yeah yeah unbelievable with uh i think the guy's name is justin uh, uh Brierly. yeah and it yeah it's a good show um i find that entertaining whenever i want something that's like intellectually challenging that's what i'll listen to I'll have to listen to that. I like that shit. And then uh, the other one that I listen to the most is called Hello from the Magic Tavern. It is from uh, the Chicago Podcast Cooperative and the sh- with in partnership with the uh, Chicago Improv. And uh, it is a total improv-based um, podcast that has the central premise of a man who uh, is going through the Burger King drive through one day and then finds himself passed through a dimensional portal into basically a world where everything from dungeon dungeons and dragons is real. And they bring in different improv actors and actresses to be a random character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He is a nerd. Yeah. There, there's your proof right there. That's, that's <laughs> it's it. really good. <laughs> that podcast is very entertaining and it's great for like light listening. Do you like Dr. Who? I do. Nerd. 
<laughs> I haven't watched it. I haven't watched it. Do you like Doctor Who? Um, yes. I, I mean, I have never seen it. I don't know. I, I haven't watched it since David Tennant was the Doctor, and that was in like 2013. Oh. I just don't have. Is I it have still going? Really? I think so. Yes, because there's a lady doctor now. That's that's. I thought I heard that's called a gynecologist. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, all right. Uh, I've got a few. I Conan O'Brien needs a friend is one that I've really enjoyed. Don't know if you guys heard that one or not. Uh, Indianapolis based uh, Pete the Planner uh, podcast is great. Uh, the West Wing Weekly, which we've talked about on here a few times, uh, that one actually just ended. They they chronicled the entire show. Got to the end, so son of a bitch. There were no more West Wing, so they had to yeah. end their podcast too. It's kind of a seasonal one. Uh, the Dale Junior download. He, I, Dale Junior. I didn't really care for him when he raced. It's a confession of mine. I didn't care that much, but um, well, no one cares about racing. He he does a really good job of bringing people on that are from that help you learn about the history of a sport, and I do appreciate some historical context of stuff and hearing old stories. Uh, and since I'm old enough to remember some stuff that happened in the early two thousands and the nineties and you know, I'm aware of stuff. From Where the were 70s. you nine 11? Uh, I was at work the same place I work right now. Uh, I was in preschool. I know. All right. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, he, he has a lot of people on. He's had Dave Marcus on and Harry Gant, just really cool old names. Uh, the interviews, that's the stuff I enjoy with him. Uh, same similar theme uh, for central Indiana uh, leaders and legends. Um, really enjoy that podcast. That's uh, produced by Chris Spangle, but uh, Robert Vane is the uh, the host of that. So if you want to hear about uh, the formation of Indiana and a lot of the stuff that's happened here and what's made Indiana, what it is in the last 30 or 40 years, Indiana and Indianapolis, uh, that's a really good podcast. And there's folks from the sports world. There's folks from the, from government, uh, from the private sector, all, all across the, the spectrum he's done a really good job of bringing folks on and sometimes it's the people that are behind the scenes not just hey yeah this is the you know the person that was mayor of the city but it might be somebody that was very influential in making stuff happen like he had allison malangdon on who was one of the people that brought the super bowl to indianapolis she kind of led the charge uh so a lot of the behind the scenes stories there um of course uh we always endorse the we're libertarians network podcasts uh brian nichols has been doing a great job who with is that? that uh he's one of our co-hosts or one of our our uh, other shows cohorts. on the network cohorts. Uh, and he does a really good job on the national level of interviewing folks. And then the, uh, the mothership, we are libertarians, of course, um, back on that racing side, uh, Mark Martin podcast, same thing T- tickles the same thing. He's covered. He'll have people he raced on against kind of a seasonal deal, or he'll, he'll cover individual seasons and eras and give you insight into stuff that you had watched from a distance. And then he'll actually give you the inside scoop on what happened. Uh, been listening lately to something called the RV miles podcast, which is just a husband and wife talking about their, their, their rig and how they made the decisions to do what they do and traveling. And then all of a sudden one of them got sick along the way and it turned into a show about life. So that one's pretty cool. Uh, then obviously dinner with racers and Marshall Pruitt. Those are the ones I look at all the time. You listen to a lot of cow. I drove, (laughs) I drove 30,000 miles last year. I got time. I got time to consume them. All right. Final thoughts from Kate. Hold on. Oh, you're still working on this. I never did mine. <laughs> you just spoke about the podcast you, you listened to for like an hour. Yeah. All, that was, all that was a tight 84 of them. That was a tight 40 <laughs> seconds. All right. I'll try to be fast, Jeremiah. <laughs> so earlier in my podcast, when I first started listening to podcasts, it was mainly sports. So I'd listen to Mike and Mike. I'd listen to a couple of like Colin Coward which I hated it at first. And now I genuinely that elitist prick, Colin Cowherd. I either really like his views or I completely hate him, but I used to just hate. Him. So I used to love him and now I hate him. So see, we've, I, we've we moved crossed in different over. directions. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there was a time before the magic radio that I could only listen to the AM radio station. And when it, I was living Muncie, in Florida, and that's all I get. when I was living in Florida, most of my friends were like, Hey man, you need to listen to this part of my take podcast and it's it's from barstool sports and i i started listening to it like they have sports and they they cover some stuff seriously but a lot of times they're just they're making fun of shit and like it's a pretty funny podcast if if you know stuff about uh, about sports so i that's probably my my number one podcast the other one's joe rogan 
Everyone, everyone listens to Joe Rogan. I mean, Cade was like, is the most popular podcast in the world. Exactly. And for me personally, I don't like any of his fighting shit. And it's not like I don't like it, but I don't listen to to most of it. I, I've listened to some of it. The fight companion ones with Eddie Bravo were great. <laughs> <laughs> but like, if he have a, if he has a scientist on or a celebrity or or anything, I mean, he has anyone on yeah. his I mean, show. There's, like, yeah, there's he, content there for anybody. Literally anything. Like, I'll, I'll listen to that. But he's a racist, so. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> and a transphobe. <laughs> it, it's funny because on Hulu, I have Hulu. I watch some of the old Fear Factor episodes. <laughs> yeah, and then you see pictures of him now. And it's just he it's looks weird. so. It's go, weird. Go watch him on uh, news radio and, I then, saw, and then see what he looks like now. And go, oh my god! There is a um, there is an old clip from uh, Chappelle's show, and uh, it's Dave Chappelle, and he's walking around New York, and he's having Joe Rogan interview people. And this was, um, and he's like, "This is Joe Rogan from NBC's <laughs> Fear Factor," and it's like, man, that's that yeah. aged perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably number two for me. Um, number three is most people probably don't expect this because I'm kind of a badass and I do a lot of really <laughs> terrible shit on the show. But number three for me is probably this this church podcast called Faith and Fables. And they go deep into to some subjects of theology, and I like that shit. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie when I, when I listen I, to it I want to know how the devil's gonna get me <laughs> <laughs> when I listen to it it makes me feel like a terrible person sometimes but they have a lot of they have a lot of good stuff I mean between you going to Notre Dame all the time and listening to that podcast you're probably saved my grandpa was a pastor so anyways it's probably my number three they have like I don't know 70 or 80 episodes at this point and I've probably listened to all of them I mean, they cover a, a wide variety of everything on the Bible. They're still doing it. Um, number four for me is completely opposite. It's called um, Caller Daddy, <laughs> and it's from Barstool Sports also. And it's yeah. basically about sex. I can't stand that one. See, I don't I, know what it is. I, just, I can't listen called? to those girls. They're Caller Daddy. Like it, mm. I like it because it's ridiculous. They are so ridiculous, though. Like, <laughs> like it's way over the top ridiculous. They're way over the top, and they say some shit like, like you know how you're in the locker room, right? And boys will be like, you got to grab her by the... They <laughs> they say stuff like way worse than that. Like, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. They're funny, though. Do you watch, do you listen to that with Katie? I've listened to it with Katie. She likes the podcast. All right. I mean, she doesn't probably listen to every episode, but I mainly it's from not that, a thing you'll do like driving. Mainly to from that episode, episode, like they give sex advice, but they talk like really gross men. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sounds like total. That it sounds like a podcast that I would listen to and make me uh, realize that civilization has been declining for yes. years. Yes. 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 Who listens to this stuff? Yes, yeah. but they're kind of funny. The, I think the guys at the fighter and the kid, they had them come on for one episode and that was where I found it. Just oh, listening probably. to them. And then I went back and subscribed to their and you, channel and, and, tried. I, and I listened to a handful of them and it's like, wow, I just, I can't listen to these uh, girls. They, they just don't me. care what they say. Yeah. And they're, they're honest. Like, I feel like a lot of girls think that way, but I don't know. Anyways, my other one's Ben Shapiro. I haven't listened to his podcast in a while because his voice annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> People say the same thing about you on ours. And no, that was Chris Guff. He sounds like a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> People just say they hate me talking about sports, which I understand because you're all fucking light. <laughs> anyways, that's all the podcasts I listen to currently. Well, thank you, Chase. Okay, any Big final Kate. thoughts? Um... No, not really, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'll pass it on to Dakota. Yeah, I have nothing for this week. I uh, can't even remember what my final thoughts were last week. What about uh, your baby? <laughs> <laughs> What's his name, by the way? His name's Jackson. Jackson. Is it from we Michael Jackson? Jackson. Huh? Or is it <laughs> is it Michael Jackson or is it Johnny Cash? From Johnny Cash. Okay, so he's a huge fan of Johnny Cash. I am. And... He, he named the child Jackson River Davis. Mm-hmm. 
Walk the line. How many pounds? Wait a minute. Walk, walk the line. <laughs> walk the line was uh, Joaquin Phoenix, and his brother was River. And here he is, mate, naming his baby Jackson River Davis. Johnny Cash song Hold Jackson. On. It's the brother of the guy that played Johnny walk Cash. Walk harder is John C. <laughs> Riley. <laughs> I, we I, were watching TV the other day. I actually, we were watching college football or basketball, and uh, I can't remember the team, but there was a player, and his last name was hyphenated Jackson Davis, Jackson hyphen Davis. And Audrey was like, "Oh, that's hilarious!" So she looked him up, and he was born on February twenty second. Oh, how crazy is that? Oh, Which, snap. of course, was the birth date. That is amazing. <laughs> 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 Twenty right. hours of labor. How'd that go? Down? <laughs> <laughs> and then the He's twin sister, trooper. the twin sister that came along that nobody saw coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh! Wow. Couldn't yeah. believe that. Couldn't believe you had to buy that second uh, that second she shed. All right, this has been fun. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> we will catch the you. The twin all. sister that came along. <laughs> you can have. We're just putting her in the shed. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Boss Hog of Liberty, which is part of the We Are Libertarians network. I am Chris Spangle, and I am the founder of this network, and I invite you to listen to all of our shows, which you can find at wearelibertarians.com or by searching for these in your podcatcher. The flagship show is the We Are Libertarians podcast, where we apply libertarian principles to current events. The Brian Nichols Show is a conversation amongst Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, Independents, as they talk about what is happening in the news. And we have many other podcasts like The Chris Spangle Show, Upward, The Cost, Raw Audio Politics, Miranda's World, and Tad Talk, which is quite a ride. So check all of these out. Go to WeAreLibertarians.com and you can check out all of our great podcasts. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Get our other shows at WeAreLibertarians.com.